Hello. Today I'm going to be talking to you about improving your search with Google Tag Manager. My name is Kat Weiss. I'm a senior developer support engineer here at Algolia, and I've been with the company for about two years. So you've probably heard people talking today about events and the Insights API. These are Algolia's ways of tracking your, your users' actions, and they are necessary in order to use our AI features like Algolia Recommend, personalization, dynamic re-ranking, and of course, our newest hybrid engine, Neural Search. You can also track which products are the most popular on your site and identify opportunities for merchandising with clicking conversion events. But events is not something that Algolia invented. It's been an industry term for decades, and the pioneer and most well-known tool is Google Tag Manager. Google Tag Manager is a tag management system that allows you to quickly and easily add tags to your website or mobile app. Once you've added a segment of Tag Manager code to your project, you can safely and easily deploy analytics and measurement tag configurations from a web-based user interface. Google Tag Manager is widely used with Google Ads, Google Analytics, and of course, Algolia has a connector with Google Tag Manager to allow you to send user actions in the form of an Algolia event. So how do you set up Google Tag Manager with Algolia? It consists of five steps. First, you will need to add appropriate HTML attributes to your website. This ensures that the Algolia Google Tag Manager variables like object ID and query ID can be retrieved by Google Tag Manager. Then you will import the Algolia Insights template to your Google Tag Manager container. And finally, you will set up your Google Tag Manager container with Algolia variables, triggers, and tags that will send insight events to Algolia. So the first thing that you need to do is update your website. This is the format that your HTML will need to follow. You'll have a div that wraps around all of your hits that contains the index name and an attribute called data insights index. Then within each hit, you will have attributes data insights object ID, data insights position, and data insights query ID. The object ID will correspond to the object ID within the Algolia index. Once your HTML is configured, you will need to ensure that you send two search parameters with each search you want to track. The first is setting the click analytics parameter to true to add the query ID to the response of the search request. And the second is the user token, which you will need to add to the Google Tag Manager data layer. Now you've got your website all set up and it's time to move on to Google Tag Manager. In Google Tag Manager, you will add the Algolia Search Insights tag template to your container. This will add the Algolia Search Insights tag type to your container and en enable the connection between your website Google Tag Manager, and Algolia. And then finally, you will create user-defined variables from the Algolia documentation. And here on the screen, you can see the seven variables that you will create. This next part will be specific to your website. You'll add tags to trigger for your events. You can add one trigger for all of your events or multiple triggers, one for each event. In this example on the screen, you can see that this is a click trigger that fires when the click text equals add to wishlist. And you'll see in my demo that I've got this set up with an add to wishlist button. The final step is adding tags to your Google Tag Manager container. You will have an initialization tag to instantiate the Insights instance on your website, which is mandatory. Then you will add one tag for each event that you want to send to Algolia. It is recommended that you send at least one click event and one conversion event. The click event is any click action that your user performs on your site. And a conversion event is considered the end all be all of your user's journey. For most e-commerce websites, that might be an add to cart or a purchase action, but it could also be completing a video or completing an article. So now I will jump into the demo and we can take a look at Google Tag Manager together. So here you can see we're at the overview tab for my Google Tag Manager container. You can see all of the things that I've just mentioned in my previous slides, like the tags, the triggers, and the variables. I've got them all set up so that we can take a look at a click event together. So this is the click tag that will send to Algolia, and it has all of the necessary information required in an Algolia Insights event. 
This is the clicked event trigger, which will fire when some when a user clicks on the add to wish list text. And then we've got our user defined Algolia variables here. So I'm going to open the debug window, which you can do by clicking here in preview. And here you will put your website's URL where you're testing Google Tag Manager. I'm just hosting a basic instant search site on my local machine. So I'll connect there and we'll take a look at it together. So the, the GTM debug window will open a tag assistant window, which will show the tags uh, as they fire. Here you can see your website and perform any actions as you would a user. Let's inspect the page so that we can take a look at the HTML that you see here. So here you can see that we've done, we've performed a search on the website and you can see in our HTML, we've got a div data insights index attribute that points to our index name. And then within each hit, we'll have the data insights object ID, the data insights position, and the data insights query ID. So now I'll close this and we'll click on add to wish list here on this second result. And we'll go into our tag assistant. So the first thing that you wanna see is on the initialization that Algolia search insights init tag has fired. Here we can see that it's succeeded. And so that means that we're connected to the Algolia search insights instance and we can perform insights events using Google Tag Manager. So the second thing we're gonna do is see that our click event has, fi has fired. So you can see that we have sent a click event tag. And if we open the variables tab, you can see that we've got the Algolia insights index, Algolia insights object IDs, positions, query ID, and user token. So now we'll head over to the Algolia dashboard and here we can see we're in the um, events debugger. I've filtered the events list to our user token so that we aren't um, bombarded with other events that are coming through on this index. And you can see that one click event has been sent with all of the relevant information that we just sent with Google Tag Manager. And so everything looks great. We have an HTTP status of 200, which means it was a valid event accepted by the Insights API. So now what we'll do together is implement a conversion event. So I'll close out of our debug window and we will create a new trigger called conversion trigger. So on my instant search website, we had a add to wishlist button and an add to cart button. So for this, conversion event, we will want it to trigger when the click text equals add to cart. So we'll click save there. And here we've got our conversion trigger. Next, we will move on to our actual conversion tag, which is what sends the event. So we'll click new there and we'll call this conversion event. And then we'll click it, we'll choose a tag type, which is the Algolia search insights tag. And here we'll choose our method. Each of these methods corresponds to a method in the insights API. Since this is a conversion event, we'll be using one of these two converted methods. And since we will have a query ID because this will come after a user search, this will be a converted object IDs after search method. And now we have all of these variables here that the template has populated for us that we need to fill in. It's quite simple. We just choose the Algolia user defined variable that we created when we set up our template. So user token corresponds with Algolia insights user token. Event name can be anything you want and you wanna choose something that is um, descriptive and unique to that event. We will call this the add to cart event. And then our index is the Algolia Insights Index, Object IDs, and Query ID. And then on triggering, 
we will choose the trigger that we just created, the conversion trigger, and click Save. All right, so now we've got our conversion event tag and our conversion trigger. We'll go over to our overview and click Preview. And again, open up my local instance. And now we will perform another search and choose a product that we want to convert on. So we will convert here on this Kindle. It's the third result in the result set. So we'll be looking for position number three. I clicked add to cart there. We will go back to our um, tag assistant window. We can see that the initialization succeeded, which is great. Now on our conversion, we can see that on that click, the conversion event fired and it succeeded. And within the variables, we can see we sent position three, we sent our object ID from our Algolia index, as well as the index name, our query ID, and the user token. Now, let's go back to our debugger, which does show events in almost near time. And you can see here, we've got a conversion event that has just been accepted, and it has our event name, which is add to cart, and all of the information that we sent with Algolia, with our Google Tag Manager connector. So, of course, that demo, everything went swimmingly. We set up a click, we set up a conversion event, showed how a click event already was working, but there can often be com common problems and troubleshooting when setting this up, and you will most likely run into a few. So the most common one that you will see is that a tag has failed or an exception has been thrown when a tag has been triggered. There are two things that you're gonna wanna do when a tag has failed. You're gonna first need to ver verify that in the variables tab of your tag assistant debug window, you can see all of the Algolia information populating. And if you cannot see that Algolia information populating, it usually means that your HTML is not properly formatted on your site in the format that Algolia needs it to be in. So you will first click here on the click event or on the click that triggered the event. Here you can see that a click event was triggered, but there was an exception thrown. So the next thing you'll wanna do is click on this variables tab within that click action. And you'll wanna look at all of the Algolia user defined variables to see if any of them are undefined. Here we can see that we have three undefined variables from the Algolia user defined variables. This means, that our HTML was not in the proper format, which you can see here. As long as the HTML is in this format when you perform the user action, then the Google Tag Manager template will be able to pick up that information and send it to Algolia. One thing that I did not cover today is sending a conversion event through, the, through Google Tag Manager from the PDP or product display page. Specifically, a conversion event for an add to cart action is very commonly done on the product display page. In this case, you'll need to use a URL or parameter or a cookie pending your user's consent to keep track of the HTML attributes from the previous page. Here you can see an example on the screen of the query ID being passed via URL parameter. You would need to do this for each of the HTML elements that Google Tag Manager needs. And I hope you've enjoyed this overview of implementing Google Tag Manager with Algolia. You can find me at LinkedIn at Kat Weiss. And thank you very much. Have a great day.